As we continue our chateau renovations and Halloween creeping upon us, we thought now would be the right time to tell you the true story of the Galigai. A woman who once owned the chateau, but was accused of witchcraft and lost her life, along with her treasure that was never found. Ever since I was a child, my parents would send me on a plane from California to Paris so that I could spend summers visiting with my grandfather at his chateau. Every evening, Pepe would take me on a drive around this lake and he would share stories about the world and his experiences and sometimes he'd share a story or two about the history of the chateau. One day, while I was visiting my grandfather, he received a phone call from a treasure hunter who claimed that there was some treasure on the property, he knew where to find it, he was gonna dig it up, and that he would split the profits 50-50 with my grandpa. My grandfather, of course, laughed about it, but later that evening, when he took me on a drive around the lake, he told me the true story of the Galigai, the white witch and her lost treasure. The story begins in 1568, Florence, Italy, with a young working class girl named Leonora Dori. Leonora was born into a family that had no money and no title to their name, but her mother happened to be a wet nurse to one of the most powerful families in all of Italy. And this was the house of Medici. You can think of them as like House Lannister. One day, the Medici family wet nurse was asked to bring her young daughter, Leonora, to come serve the family. And her position would be to help by providing companionship to a young Maria de' Medici, or as the French like to call her, Marie de' Medicis. Uh, you can think of her as Cersei Lannister in this story. Leonora had an opportunity to purchase a name and title for herself, and this would allow her to continue her duties for Marie, except now she would be remaining within her court. And the name that she purchased was Gelly Gay. To make sure that she didn't forget her place, the people at Palazzo Pitti were quite rude and they called her the Galigai, not Lady Galigai. But Marie didn't really care because Leonora was like a big sister to her, her best friend, and she trusted her. So when suitors came a knocking, Marie refused all of the proposals under Leonora's guidance until Henry IV, King of France, presented himself. It was finally a proposition worthy of the Medici dowry. Leonora knew this proposal would make Marie the Queen of France, as well as provide some leverage. As we know now though, smart women and women of influence back then were often questioned for their cunning.
Marie and the king got married in the year 1600 and they moved to Paris, to the palace which is now the Louvre Museum. Many of the nobles from the court in Florence moved with Marie, along with Leonora Dori. And amongst them was the infamous Count Concino Concini, who would later become Leonora's husband. Concini was always trying to snake his way into positions of power, kind of like Littlefinger. And some believe that he would eventually play a part in the assassination of King Henry IV because the results of that murder left Leonora and Concini both in very powerful positions at the Queen's side. Let me see if this works. Hey, it didn't blow up. And it's a little less creepy now. Kind of. Through their affiliation with the queen, they made a lot of money, took some bribes, and got a lot of deals. The chateau was one of them, the Chateau de Lizini. And let's just say that they got it at a pretty solid family and friends discount. They did, however, make many changes and embellishments to the chateau, and there were many similarities to the Palace de Pitti from Florence, including the shape and the orangerie, the garden, and this very chapel, which was consecrated in 1615. Unfortunately, Leonora's Italian ways, her perfumes, her herbal gardens, and some pretty intense health issues were accompanied by some pretty nasty rumors. She dealt with depression and panic attacks and epilepsy, which were unknown ailments at the time and assumed to be demonic possessions. The queen had all the royal doctors treat Leonora, which was frankly more witchcrafty than anything we could find on what she was doing herself. The guidance Leonora provided was so valued by the queen, though, that she called it divine intervention and assimilation with the angels. Eventually, there was a doctor who was able to calm Leonora's seizures and her panic attacks, but by then, she had already been labeled a witch. Eventually, Queen Marie's son, Prince Louis XIII, came of age and he was crowned the new King of France, which is a problem because the first thing he did was imprison his mother Marie and then ban Count Concini from court, even though at the time he was the new marshal. When Concini tried entering the French palace, he was then denied at the gate. And this caused a fight to break out, which he lost and was stabbed. And poor Leonora had to find out all at once that her husband had just been killed and now they were coming to arrest her. Things were getting real Game of Thrones real quick. So 
she was tried by the parliament for 15 days, and the only thing they could use against her was witchcraft. And it's kind of hard to disprove something that's... Questionable. Questionable, yeah. But she was sentenced to death, and not in a pleasant way. But apparently when she was being walked to the death proceeding... The guillotine. The guillotine. Okay, that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, when she was on her way there, people were saying that she was still holding her religious faith, and she was not doing anything that would outrightly say she was actually a witch, so... And by then, all of her responses from trial got to the people, and so they were not happy about her being sentenced to death. Yeah. So they started calling her the White Witch. Now, it's understandable that the king wanted the Count Concini dead and probably would want Leonora because they had been the closest to the queen and the closest to the access of all of the palace's treasure. Leonora was very clever, and she put a lot of effort into creating a luxurious life for herself. And she and Concini must have amassed quite an amount of gold and a wealth of belongings. Some people believe that when she was preparing to turn herself in to the king, that she may have hidden some or most of that treasure. Because it was not found when they raided the place. Your grandfather had more than one person asked to use like a backhoe or something and try to dig up different parts of the forest. And I can't imagine that Leonora Dory would be able to dig, within a few days, be able to dig like 20 feet deep to bury a treasure. But um, she was a witch, allegedly. Right, so. she was a witch. Maybe she just made it disappear. Yeah. My personal belief is that she might have had the gold sent to her family in Italy. She did have a son in Italy. If the accounts are right, they essentially had billions. For that time. For that time, yeah. yeah. So, you know. Even if it was just like. Whoever got the money, it would have become apparent. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden her son is like buying a yacht. <laughs> and a Ferrari. <laughs> Bunch and of Bitcoin. So many horses. <laughs> What is interesting, though, is how much people really believe that the treasure is somewhere here at the chateau, um, enough to actually bring in professional equipment and invest in it. But I don't know. I mean, it, I haven't seen it yet. And it's not over there in the dungeon, because I just checked today. We know it's not in the moat, because that was emptied in like the 40s. It's not in any area that's been renovated in the chateau, and I'm pretty sure they went through a lot of the walls. Yeah, the many owners of the chateau since the <laughs> early 1600s, almost, yeah, just about 400 years of uh, new ownership. I think someone would have discovered it if it was in the actual chateau. Yeah. What do you guys think? Did she bury the treasure somewhere on the domain? Or do you think she sent it back to Italy, maybe for her son? I don't know if we'll ever find out. I mean, we do have a couple shovels and a metal detector. Yeah, we'll never find out. <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed our little Halloween special of the Beau Chateau and uh, have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. This wasn't the case, Oh my of god, Archaea is killing a bird in the background. Archaea! That's really dark. It's too, it's too scary. I know it's Halloween, but that's too scary. Yeah, our, our cat killed a pigeon, and Archaea is now double Making killing sure it. Dead. Yeah, I appreciate the zombie prevention, 
but please, <laughs> not on camera. Will you lay down with us? You hang out? Will you stay with us? Hi, you just, you've got like dead pigeon on your muzzle mouth. So just lay down. <laughs>